supposed to be hiding, remember? Captain's orders. No, don't... We came as soon as we heard the news. <sighs> I can't believe we were so careless. The most crucial information of all was hiding right there, in that room. And we missed it. Don't blame yourself. Right now, we need to focus on finding a way in. There's a mechanical door over here! Hopefully the instructions in Rawat's journal will help us open it. It's open. Let's go in. How did they get in here? Captain, up ahead! Those look like our fugitives! So they found this place too? Don't let any of them escape! Bow your head. <laughs> Another test subject. Strike a pose! Water check! That tingle? Oh, freeze! Uh, picked the wrong test subject. Captain, according to our list, many of the fugitives aren't accounted for. There may be others hiding deeper inside the facility. Ah, uh, so these guys were just the lookout crew. The Mara Chose Phantom? How did they find this place? Wait, it's that guard from the fortress! That's right, I I'm on your side. Uh, I mean, th the Duke sent me. What's the matter, some sort of mix-up? Mr. Odilon, didn't I tell you a few days ago that you need to stop all field work until you've recovered? Ah, uh, well, you know, gotta help His Grace out, share the load. <coughs> Officer Morgan, this man is an imposter. The real Mr. Odilon has no recent health issues. What? But I... <sighs> Looks like the head nurse was right about the face swapping method. Arrest them all. DuPont, stay here and keep guard. And watch the exit. If we're not back soon, call for reinforcements. Got it. Don't worry, I got this covered. Don't slip and fall!
so many jars. Was this some sort of production facility? This scent... It's probably the ingredients used to make butterfly dew. How come they're all empty? Did it sell so well that he ran out of supplies? How strange. Why would Rawat choose to manufacture a popular product like that in such a difficult-to-reach location? Given our suspicion that he may have been coerced into the illegal drug trade, I would have thought that any production facility we find here would be used for illicit purposes. Perhaps Butterfly Dew is itself an illegal drug. Do you have any evidence for that claim? No, just a guess. We need to find Rawat as soon as possible. He has all the answers we need. Understood. Well, let's not linger here. Let's go. Come on. Like we're gonna get this door open. Let's find another way around. <sighs> this one's close too. Hmm. What's with those carts and tracks? Oh, maybe it's one of those doors that opens when it senses cargo passing through. There's a loaded cart right over there. Let's bring it to the door and give it a try.
This room's much smaller than the others. Judging by the implements on the table, this looks like a potion-making lab. Uh, head nurse! Over here! Let's see... Huh? Robot's clothes? Why would he change here? Perhaps they stripped him down, left the clothes behind, and disposed of him somewhere else? Yikes, Seedween, where did that come from? Oh, what a tragic way to go. Especially with such a bright future ahead of him. <sighs> There's a path leading further on, Officer Morgan. Let's keep up the pace. Are you serious? You're telling us that within a day, our faces are going to rot like yours? Fontanian physiology changed dramatically after that great flood, and it's not as compatible with this face-changing solution as before. The side effects are as you can see. Why didn't you say anything before we all used it? Look, my plan got you all out of prison, didn't it? You'd have much bigger problems to worry about right now if the Marshall Say Phantom found out about your other crimes. Consider an ugly mug getting off lightly. Ugh. You're just lucky we didn't leave you in there after you disappeared on us with no warning. We only let it slide because we're former partners. And now you have the gall to pull a stunt like this? Partners? Make no mistake, each of us is only looking out for himself. If you place too much trust in others, well, I'm afraid that's your problem. You hid things from me, too. Remember how you each had a spare potion, yet kept quiet about it until we planned the prison break? Oh, and you didn't have a secret spare? Then do you want to explain how you melted your face off before all this? Guys, that's enough. Calm down. It is what it is. Arguing won't change anything. What's the plan, Parton? I'm assuming you brought us here for a reason? There is no plan. We followed him here on the promise of more juice, but it turns out there ain't a drop here. Besides, what does it matter now anyway? He already said, even if we did get our hands on more of that stuff, switching faces again solves nothing. They're still gonna melt off eventually. I said enough arguing. Potton, tell us the plan. <sighs> the most practical solution is to continue using the potion. Keep switching to a new face before the ulcers can start forming. Are you kidding me? This stuff was hard enough to get a hold of even when we had a supply. Now you're asking us to use it like skin lotion, after the flood all but wiped the supply out? Well, there is another option. 
But you'll have to make a deal with me first. Okay, now we're talking. What's the deal? I have a document I took from that researcher that details how to make a replacement. Just give me one bottle of the undiluted fluid, and I'll get to work. Uh... What's the problem? I thought you always kept reserves. Or do you really just have one spare bottle each? What do you think? That we were shipping them into the fortress of Meripede by the basket load? Well then, say hello to never showing your marred faces in public again. Ugh, I've heard enough! Get him! Let's see if that document even exists! Freeze! Marsho, say Phantom! What? Who let them in? Officer Morgan, before anything else, please find out Rawat's status. Rawat? I don't see him. Hand over the hostage now! If you want any chance of avoiding an extension to your sentences. <laughs> Spare us your condescending attempts to coax us back to our cells. You think we're looking to negotiate? Rawat is dead. Putin? Arrest them all! Don't let anyone get away! Come Shower me with praise! Time to shine! Go! Bombs away! Bow your head. The tides beckon. Strike a pose! Let's see! I swear, it's for medical research! Huh, gotta say. I never expected to see the head nurse in combat. Some patients respond better to a more aggressive treatment plan. Did we get everyone? Captain, we finished the head count. Potten's missing. Over there! The door's closing! <laughs> One group trying to arrest me, another trying to hunt me down. Good. I gotta kill two birds with one stone. Uh, how did he get up there? There must be a secret passage somewhere. Find it! Don't waste your energy. I already sealed it off. How naive. We have more people outside. If we're not back out by the agreed time, they'll come to our rescue. Well then, you'd better hope they get here in time. There's some kind of gas leaking from the pipes. Be careful, it's poisonous. This is our distribution center where we store the product derived from our source solution. We had to use special fire prevention methods to prevent contamination. The pipe network here was designed to emit a gas for firefighting. One little modification later, and it makes an efficient death trap. Why would you do this? Your partners are here too. Oh, please. If they can't supply what I need, they're of no further use to me. Besides, I can't have him exposing my potential whereabouts. He's a maniac! Come on, we gotta find a way to open that door! Go ahead, struggle in vain. Once the last of you croaks, no one will ever find me again. So long! Are you sure you're ready to leave, Potten? You haven't changed your dressing today. You can't cure my face, just give up. And what if I could? <laughs> nice try. You're just trying to stall me. Don't you worry about me. I'll find a way to cure my face once I get out of here. Oh, I doubt it. After all, Fontanians can no longer dissolve in primordial seawater. What? I, what, what, what the? I, how, how did you... The key component of the face-changing potion is the fluid left behind by dissolved Fontanians. It might look like ordinary water, but it has some unique elements in it. Before the Flood, all Fontanians were Oceanids, physiologically speaking. A potion made from that fluid could dissolve and reconstruct the face of a Fontanian, 
In much the same way as Hydra Idolans change form. Theoretically, it could give someone any appearance they wished. But since the Flood, Fontanians have become true humans. They can no longer provide the source material for this potion, nor reap its benefits. Are you saying... This potion is made from Fontanians dissolved with primordial seawater? And their crimes are far worse than I thought. How could you know all of this? No, wait. <laughs> of course! Well, well. So that's why you have a human appearance. It also means that I have a formula you're unaware of. <laughs> the air's getting thicker. It's getting hard to breathe. <laughs> I might get to make a deal today after all. All right, keep talking. How do you intend to give me the formula? Oh, it's not a formula, but a finished product. I have a bottle of it right here. What? When I tried Rawat's skincare product, I noticed it had a certain special component in it. So I had my friends gather some other ingredients for me, and sure enough, a little experimenting later, I produced the potion. I'm guessing his skincare lotion contains the fruits of your joint research? Huh. Impressive guesswork. Yeah, we were a supplier for some of the raw ingredients. <gasps> but it only contains a tiny amount of the active ingredient. The effect is minuscule compared to the undiluted fluid. Well, I found a way to reverse the dilution process, giving the skincare lotion a similar effect to the fluid it is derived from. That's impossible. If I tell you some of the ingredients, I think you can figure it out. First, you need to combine tainted hydro phantasm tissue with transoceanic pearls at a ratio of around 3 to 7. Tainted hydrophantasms and transoceanic pearls. <sighs> I see. Can't believe I never thought of that. So, can we make a deal? Sounds good to me. There's a delivery pipe underneath this window. Drop the potion in, and I'll release you all. Nope. Not trusting you that easily. You're like those naughty kids who try to hide their illness. Open the sluice gate first, then I'll hand you the potion. <laughs> Even if you're not bluffing, your potion won't cure my face permanently. You really think you have any leverage here? I'm not closing the valve this time. Clock's ticking. Fine. Then I'll just stand here with the potion in my hand. And when I faint from the poison, I'll drop it and it'll be destroyed. No. It's opening! Disable that sluice gate! Jam it! Don't let it close again! That's more like it. In that case, a promise is a promise. Head nurse, there's too much poison gas in here. We have to leave, now. Too close. That button is a real nasty piece of work. Oh, don't be too quick to sit down. Moving around a little will help relieve the soreness. Same goes for you, traveler. Oh, but Paimon, you should be fine, right? Flying fast is pretty tiring too, actually. Anyway, that's not important right now. Paimon's still shocked to learn that there's a whole criminal operation going on behind that skincare lotion. Shame I ended up giving the improved version of Potten after finally making it for you. I'll make you some more, I promise. No, 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 please don't. Paimon doesn't want to use that stuff anymore. Still, it was a pretty good job that Paimon wanted to buy some in the first place, huh? It ended up saving everyone's lives! 
That's gotta count for something. Yeah, yeah, Paimon was just kidding. Head nurse, I've done a final head count of our team and the criminals. Everyone's here and doing fine. We're ready to escort the fugitives back to the fortress of Meripede. It's a shame that we didn't find Rawat. At this point, I'm afraid he's probably deceased. <sighs> what a horrible bunch. Especially that Patton guy. If he hadn't made good on that deal, we'd all be dead because of him. No, we wouldn't. I always keep a whole bunch of antidotes on me for emergencies. And one of them neutralizes that poison gas. We'd have been fine, even if he hadn't opened the gate. What? Then why did you give him the potion? If this is true, I must concur. Sorry to be blunt, but I think you made a bad decision by handing him that bottle. If he changes his appearance and flees Fontaine, it's unlikely that we'll ever find him. No matter how cooperative his accomplices are when we question them. No, you don't understand. I gave him the potion precisely so we could be sure where he'll go next. What do you mean? We gotta hurry. She won't last much longer. Don't move a muscle. I might be short, but I pack a mean punch. Captain? You're just in time. While I was lying in wait, I spotted this crook snooping around, trying to find a way in. So I detained him. <laughs> oh, His face. Are you... Potten? So this is where you were heading, huh? What? This is how Potten looked before his face was marred. His current appearance matches the mugshot on his arrest warrant. <sighs> I see. Wait, so what's going on? Wasn't the whole point of the potion to disguise himself and escape Fontaine? Why would he change back to his original face and run right into our trap? Enough of this nonsense. Let me in! You better pipe down. There's an old lady in there who's very sick. No way are we letting a crook like you inside. <sighs> to heck with it. Listen to me. I'm Rawat. Th that's my mother in there. He's got to be lying, right? Rawat was a victim in all this. He was forced into it against his will. How can he and this monster be the same person? Forced against his will? <laughs> that's the funniest thing I've heard all day. Back when I was being coerced, everyone thought I was colluding of my own free will. And then when I actually became a criminal in my own right, you all suddenly thought I must be under duress. Amazing what a difference a handsome face makes. Save us the speech. Explain yourself. You want an explanation? Fine. I'll tell it how it is. When I was just potten, the whole world treated me with contempt. Ew. What do you want? Get away from me. Women despise me. Collaborate? <laughs> you don't look like much of a researcher to me. My peers scorned me. Mr. Potten, was it? I'm most interested in your research. Consider my offer carefully. I doubt you'll find other investment opportunities. Only villains would work with me. You went out of the game? Forget about it. Turns out, I slipped up a little. Left your picture with some Mara Chaussee Phantom officers. Easy mistake to make. Now they've listed you as an accomplice and drawn up an arrest warrant. So I suggest you put any thoughts of running away to rest. If you get caught by the guards for being in the synth business, you ain't ever seen the light of day again. <laughs> there was no way out for me. Until I could stop being potten. Mr. Rawat, I... <laughs> um... <laughs> I have something I'd like to tell you. I became popular with women. This new potion you developed is fascinating. Genius, in fact. Would you consider working with me? I'd be happy to sign a licensing agreement. My peers looked up to me. 
Okay. Uh, I'm very interested in your research, sir. You must no doubt have offers from countless investors, uh, so far be it for me to ask for a full collaboration, per se. I merely wanted to express my interest. Uh, no pressure at all, naturally. And the villains even began to fear me. Becoming Rawat showed me what a superficial world we live in. But I did not hold a grudge. After all, this superficiality could be made to work in my favor. Or so I thought. But alas, the world seemed bent on finding a reason to make me despise it. Mother, I'm back. How are you doing? Oh, oh who are you? I bought the best medicine Mora could buy, but nothing would cure her illness. In the end, I hoped she'd at least be able to see her son one last time before she passed, but when everyone else rejected me, the only person who cared about me was my mother. Then, when I became a rising star in the Fontaine Research Institute, I was unrecognizable to her. I have to let her see me again. Even if it means donning my own wretched, ugly face. Well, is that enough explaining for you? Now do you understand? Let me inside already! Have you ever considered if you'll even be able to look your mother in the eyes? After what you've done, you found a way to completely change your identity. You could easily have escaped from them. But no, you chose to keep working with them. <laughs> Why would I want to give up on such a lucrative business? The profits were dozens of times that of the synth business, and it was all above board. So you kept being a villain just for the money? Villain? By what standard? Is doing evil deeds really what makes someone a villain in your eyes? Or does it all come down to the way they look? None of you saw a villain when I was wearing my other face, did you? You have no right to judge me! You're all just fake people living in a hypocritical world! I regret nothing! My mother would understand! You... You're a villain to the core! But especially that tongue! Honestly, I don't see a villain when I look at your current face either. Don't humor me. You don't seem surprised by my confession in the least. How long have you known the truth? I didn't know anything for sure until you chose to take that potion bottle and spare our lives. But if you're asking when I started suspecting you, it was the first time you came to see me at the infirmary. I had to confirm my suspicions. That's why I chose to join this investigation. Are you kidding me? A young promising researcher and a wretched criminal? What on earth gave you the idea that they could be one and the same person? Well, there were no visual clues. This potion's face-changing effects are very powerful. Even as a Melazine, I couldn't see through the disguise. But I believe I understand humanity a little better than most of my kind. Humans have certain fundamental qualities that do not change with their appearance. Fundamental qualities, huh? So you think you're the one who's seen through me, do you? Most people probably don't know this, but I think I can guess what your deal is. Melazine constitutions are very close to that of water, so it stands to reason that the potion should work on them, too. You used it yourself, didn't you? That's why you have a human appearance. Sea Dream? Yes, you're right. <laughs> I'll bet it was back in the days when Melazines were discriminated against because of their appearance. It was either carry on living in the gutters as part of an alien race cast out by humanity, or become the head nurse of the Fortress of Meripede, revered by all. Not a hard choice to make. It's a no-brainer. So you see, you and I were the same. And I'm the one who saw through you! That's not important right now. You came here to see your mother, didn't you? Well, I can grant you your wish. Huh? Head nurse, I'm not sure that's a good idea, in his current state. Don't worry. Back in the warehouse when I traded the potion for our lives, I was doing it to test him. 
He was willing to risk sacrificing his only chance of escaping capture by opening the gate in exchange for the potion. Also, he could see his mother again. If nothing else, his concern for his mother is genuine. I see. So before you arrest him, please allow him to see his mother one last time. The Traveler and I will accompany him. You have nothing to worry about. All right. I understand. I don't trust this guy much. Be careful. Join the head nurse inside. If he tries anything, anything at all, shout. Mom? It's me, Potten. Your son. Y you recognize me now, don't you? <coughs> Mom, what's wrong? I'm sorry, but I have some bad news. I examined your mother last time we were here, and it appears that due to her prolonged fever, she's lost her eyesight. What? Your appearance no longer has any bearing on her ability to recognize you. But there are always other ways to remind our loved ones who we are, wouldn't you say? No, 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 it can't be. P please, Mom, open your eyes. It's me, your son, Potten. If, if, if you really can't see my face, then here, take my hand. Tell me you feel your son's hand. Uh. I've done so much to get to this point. Please, you have to recognize me. <coughs> no, 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 no! Well, the temperature of his palm must have changed. I'm sorry. It seems I couldn't bring him back to you after all. <sighs> it's you. Thank you. Oh, of course. Mom, why will you answer her and not me? Why? Why? No more questions, Potten. She's gone. Mom? Mom? I'm sorry to say this, Potten, but you and I are not the same. The sale of our new skincare product, Romaritime Essence, will now begin. Another skincare promotion! And it's selling as fast as last time! Wonder what people would think if they knew what was in the last batch. Oh, Sea Dream's here too! Hey, Sea Dream! Oh, Traveler Paimon, hello! I hope you two got a good rest yesterday after all your hard work. Of course! Nurse's orders, right? Anyway, are you here to take notes for your next article? Actually, I'm mostly here to help Officer Morgan wrap up yesterday's case. Ah! That reminds Paimon. That stuff sold like crazy, didn't it? Is it gonna cause huge problems? Nope, there's nothing to worry about. Unless modified, Butterfly Dew is an excellent skincare product that's completely safe to use. Besides, officers have already retrieved all Butterfly Dew purchased on the market. Now it's just a matter of disposal. After consulting Monsieur Nervulet, I came up with a way to neutralize any harmful effects, so it'll evaporate naturally without polluting water or soil. Wow, 
It's Sea Dream to the rescue again! Thank you for serving as our consultant, Head Nurse. All the butterfly dew we recovered has been disposed of, according to your instructions. Great! Good job, everyone! Also, you mentioned you wanted a copy of Watts' interrogation records. Well, technically, Potten's records. Anyway, I have them with me. Here. After he saw his mother for the last time, it was like all his mental defenses came crashing down. He put up no resistance during the interrogation, and answered all our questions. We learned a lot. Apparently, the formula was something he discovered by chance while helping the criminal gang produce synth. Later, he came up with the idea to dilute it, and use the resulting substance as a skincare product. Their supplier was Vache. But you could also argue that they were the ones doing him a favor. His operation helped Vache's gang dispose of an enormous amount of evidence. It made for a seamless collaboration. One man's trash was another man's treasure, and there were no loose ends. It's no wonder we never noticed what Potten's gang was up to. Vache again, huh? Is there still no end to the harm he caused? Make no mistake. The crimes of Vache and his accomplices will come to an end. It's only a matter of time. Since the Flood cut off their supply of primordial seawater, they've been forced to resort to riskier methods, like using their private reserve to attack people on the street. Naturally, those attempts all ended in failure. After receiving numerous reports, we were able to zero in on the gang and eventually round them up. That sounds more like it. Based on what he told us in his confession, he pretty much had him backed into a corner, even though he made a point of distancing himself from the gang while disguised as Rawat. He tried to throw us off his tail by reporting his accomplices, giving him enough time to transform back into Potten and see his mother one last time. But there was one thing he hadn't anticipated. Even though Potten had been missing for a long time, we were very much still on the lookout for him. So, the moment he appeared in public, after changing back to his original appearance, we caught him. So he tried this once before, huh? Guess he really did want his mother to see him again. But in the end... Looking at the interrogation records, it seems like he spent the first sum of money he earned as reward on his mother's treatment. Yes, which is why I suspect that his initial motive for using the potion was not personal greed but a desire to become somebody who had the power to save her. Even so, he went too far. In the end, he got what he deserved. I understand. Thank you for bringing me these records. Why did you want them anyway? Potten was one of my patients, so I need to put together a medical file for him. My teacher always stressed that a person's life experiences are just as important to their file as their medical history. Why are you still treating him like your patient? Isn't he kind of beyond redemption now? Well, that may be true, but a patient is a patient, regardless of the choices that bring them to my care. Ah, uh, one last thing, head nurse. Please keep everything you know about this potion a secret. It would be for the best if most of Fontaine knows nothing of its existence. I know my fellow officers and I will be able to sleep easier if that's the case. Of course. Not to worry. Thank you for understanding. I'll take my leave then. So, Seedween, did you really use that potion yourself? Why do you sound so surprised, Paimon? I told you all about it. It was quite a while ago now. Uh, you mean that story about the witch and the potion? So it was really, actually, genuinely a true story? Yes, it really, actually, genuinely was. But... I know. Uh, there are some secrets I can't tell anyone about. Um, but considering everything we've been through together, I know I can trust you with them. 
Before I tell you though, could you follow me somewhere? I want to pay my respects to an old friend. Of course! They're here too! Good to see you, Traveler, Paimon. I trust all has been going well for you. Big news, everyone. The Udex is out of his office on important business. Hmm? Is that genuinely something people would consider big news? <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Important business is a big deal. Ah, yes, you're quite right. When someone you care about requires emotional support, being there for them at the right time and place is of the utmost importance. After reading the Marishal Say Phantom's reports, I had a feeling a trip here might be in order. Take note. That, my friends, is how Monsieur Nervillette shows that he cares. We're both here for the same purpose, actually. To accompany Sijuin as she pays her respects to her late teacher. So the old friend she mentioned was her teacher, then? The witch? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Paimon didn't mean to be rude. It's only because Seedwing calls her that all the time, so... I doubt she considers that title to be offensive, Paimon. Don't worry. Indeed. In fact, I believe Seedwing would take it as a sign of affection. She has spoken of this doctor on many occasions, and it sounds like she was a truly generous individual. In those days, many people harbored prejudices against Melusines. She was the only teacher willing to take Sijuin on as a student. Wow! It's really nice of you two to be here for Sijuin. Guess you guys really look out for your younger colleagues, huh? A younger colleague? Well, that might be true for the Udex, but I'm not sure I can say the same. Sijuin served a sentence in the Fortress of Meripede hundreds of years ago, and after she did her time, she decided to stick around. She's been an integral part of our administration ever since. Strictly speaking, the head nurse has been around longer than most people in the Fortress, myself included. Pretty sure that makes me the younger colleague. She served a sentence? Yes. Long before I became Udex, there was an ancient law in Fontaine that prohibited any attempt to transform another species into a human. Initially, I and most researchers believe this law to have been imposed due to ethical concerns. But now, it seems more likely that the law was nothing more than an insurance policy. A way for Egeria to ensure that her people would remain insulated from the truth, thus enabling them to lead more straightforward, happier lives. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. Sijuin had her reasons for choosing to obtain a human form, but the act was nonetheless in clear violation of the law. Could you tell us a little bit more about what happened back then? Certainly. Sijuin does not object to her close friends learning about her history. In fact, I first learned of it myself because she confessed the truth to me of her own volition. Even with their daughter so ill, they kicked you out? <sighs> Stubborn as always. And prejudice isn't a disease I can cure either. <sighs> Shame that I don't have the energy to get over there. <sighs> You're laughable, you old witch. You want to save everyone in Fontaine, but you can't even save the patient before you. Master, what are you... I discovered a strange disease, one I suspect that every Fontanian suffers from. But without witnesses or proof, no one will believe me. I had no choice but to experiment on myself to find a cure, but I hit a wall. And as you can see, it took a wretched toll on me. Then, I'll find a cure for you, then you can go cure her. 
There's no need. I am beyond saving now. There's nothing you can do. But, Master... As I said before, a doctor's duty is to treat whatever ailments they can. I know, but they don't trust me at all. <coughs> that girl... She's your first ever patient, isn't she? Tell me, what cost are you willing to bear to see her cured? I'll do whatever it takes. Even if it means breaking the law and being punished for it? As long as I don't hurt anyone, yes. Spoken like a true student of mine. Then I shall make one more final gamble. And see my experiment through to its end. Leave me for now, and come back in two hours. If I am able to work this miracle, then I will have found a way to save all Fontanians. And I shall be able to help you treat that girl. If not, then it means there is one more disease in this world that I cannot treat. In that case, do not come looking for me. I will leave you a parting gift. An accidental discovery happened upon through my study of this strange disease. It has little use, but it will at least help you cure this one patient you can reach. When Sijuin returned, the miracle had not occurred. She found a potion bottle and a note on the table. After using the potion as instructed, she gained her current form, breaking Fontaine's law in the process. And after I had confirmed the veracity of the events, I gave my verdict. So that's what happened. I fear Sijuin only understood the full story after the truth about the dissolution of Fontanians was uncovered. When I reflected on all this with that knowledge in hand, I felt a deep sense of regret. As I use the law to uphold justice, there are times when I cannot help but acknowledge its ruthlessness. After the final details of the events surrounding Sijuin's transformation came to light, I checked several sources and, thankfully, the legal code does not require Sijuin to shoulder any additional punishment. Hmm. Wonder how she feels about all this. Since she invited you here, I imagine she intends to speak of these matters with you, no? On behalf of the Marichalse Phantom, I would like to once again thank the Fortress of Meripede for your assistance in the response to yesterday's prison break. Our head nurse and the Traveler and Paimon did most of the heavy lifting, I would say. Sijuin seems to be in good spirits. I trust work hasn't been too hard on her lately? Well, she might be the only permanent medical staff in the fortress, but there's plenty of people with medical knowledge willing to help her out. I am most relieved to hear it. <laughs> the way you're asking after her well-being makes you sound like a concerned parent. Ah, well, I, I won't lie. I've always seen myself that way. Showing your age a bit there, don't you think? Indeed. Actually, I often forget just how much older I am than you. Well, while we're on the topic, what did you do before getting this job, anyway? Spend all day swimming in the sea, from east to west, and then north to south? Yes, and, uh, from the surface to the ocean floor on occasion. Wow. Impressive. Apologies, that was merely an attempt at humor. You can disregard what I said. <laughs> uh, that's impossible, I'm afraid. My imagination's already running wild. Here. The old 
friend I mentioned was my teacher. When she passed, her body was nowhere to be found. All that's left of her is an empty tomb. And even that's deep underwater now. Sea Dream, the witch who gave you the magic potion, she was your teacher, wasn't she? <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Nervulet filled you in. After learning the truth, it must have been hard to process, huh? Well, to be honest, after I realized what really happened that night, my first thought was that it kind of made sense. It seemed exactly like the sort of thing she would do. But she was planning to sacrifice herself and never told you! That's just who she was. If lying is what it took to get a kid to take their medicine, then that's what she'd do. Alright, but why did you turn yourself in? I broke the law, simple as that. My teacher made her choice, and I made mine. True. It's just... The way Potten framed it when he was asking you all those questions, it made Paimon really mad. You don't like him at all, and everything Nervalet said confirms that. And yet, you were still convicted and thrown in prison. It just feels so unfair. <laughs> unfair? I happen to think just the opposite. If I hadn't served that time, I'm not sure I would have been able to stay strong when he was questioning me. What makes you say that? I knew you'd be curious. Let me tell you a story. The verdict came down. This Melazine is guilty. The Udex defended the authority of Fontaine Law, but he did not confiscate the Melazine's medical kit. And so, the Fortress of Meripede gained a new little doctor. She still wore her hood and raincoat, even though it never rained in the fortress. Perhaps thanks to her human appearance, no one refused her treatment. She treated more and more patients, and her sentence grew ever shorter. Finally, the people of the fortress could not live without her, and though her sentence ended, she did not leave them either. Then one day, she received an invitation from the outside world. The location seemed familiar, and when she arrived, an old lady was waiting for her. She saw right through the Melazine's disguise, but didn't reveal it. Instead, she asked a question. Tell me, why do you think you gained the respect of so many people, despite being a Melazine? Because... I look like a human? <laughs> it's been 50 years, Sijuin. And you haven't aged a day. I think everyone knows you are not human. I finally found you, after all these years. I still remember, you know. It was you who saved me that night. <gasps> but... how? I was no longer a Melazine by then. Does it really matter? If you're human or Melazine? I remember the warmth of your palm. It's quite unmistakable. And you know what? It hasn't changed one bit. You don't have to hide anymore, Sijuin. These days, everyone wants to make friends with Melazines. And I think that it's all because of you. I'm sorry I couldn't say this until now, but thank you, Dr. Melazine. Now that's an ending Paimon can get behind. After hearing everything Potten said, I wanted to tell him that it didn't matter who he looked like on the outside. But it was too late. 
the warmth in his palm had already disappeared. I tried to treat him, but the roots of his problem had nothing to do with his face. I understand. Thanks, you two. I appreciate you being here for me while I talk this through. Oh, it's nothing. Our pleasure. Oh, there's one more reason I invited you here. It's about time I finally give you what I promised. In order to restore the appearances of the face-swapping victims, the Mara Chassé Phantom gave me special permission to make a few bottles of that potion. And I made one extra just for you two. Uh, we don't need it though. Shouldn't we destroy it? Well, even if you chose to destroy it, I still thought I should give it to you first. You two did so much for me. How could I break my promise? Well, fair enough, but anyway... Hyman's definitely not interested in this stuff anymore. Still, if this is the very last bottle in all of Tevat, getting rid of it would feel like kind of a waste. Maybe we can give it a special meaning somehow. Oh, Paimon's got it! Melusine physiology wasn't affected by the Great Flood, right? So that means the potion should have a permanent effect on you! In that case, what do you say, Seedween? Ever thought about transforming back to the way you used to look? After all, from a Melusine point of view, Paimon bets Melusines look the cutest of all! Paimon, after everything, do you really think it matters whether I'm Melusine or a human? Uh, well... What was Paimon thinking? You made up your mind a long time ago! Yeah, let's just destroy this thing! Leave it to me. I'd like to stay here with my teacher for a little longer.